you have a personal protection order, or you're not supposed to even have. No matter any how long I do prison, it doesn't uh, matter if I do do ten years. In prison. Well, you're working. As long yourself. as you're still waiting for me when I get out, I'm still married. Into it. You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Thank you. Please have a seat and state your name. Dan Thayer. Don't you Thayer, who's your employer? Village of Constantine. What's your position with the Village oh, of Constantine? The yellow pad. Oh, I got one here. I got a few pages. Left. What's your position with the Village of Constantine? Police chief. All uh, right. Um, were you working on uh, August 14th of 2023 on or about? Let me get you the on August 12th. Were you working that day? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, did you have contact with a Carly Harmon that day? I did. did you? Okay. What was the nature of that contact? I was batched there to check on a dog that had been locked in a car out in the heat. Okay. And um, when you and you responded to that call? Yes. And where whereabouts was that? Um, where was that call to? In the apartment uh, parking lot at 200 Meadow Lane on the south end of town. All right, and um, I guess what'd you find when you reported to the scene there? Well, there was a dog park uh, locked inside the car. And so it took me a little bit to track down the manager to give me an idea of where I could look for the owner because the registered owner of the vehicle did not live there or have any contact in the county when I checked. Uh, were you able to determine uh, where the individual in the vehicle might be? Yes, the manager uh, suggested it directed me to apartment 14 just because the tenant was fairly new and it could have been them. And so I checked there and uh, discovered Mr. Hewitt had uh, admitted it was his dog and, and the car was in, under his position at that time. All right. So you, you made uh, you made contact with Trevor Hewitt at that at that address. Right. OK. Was there anybody else at that apartment? Ms. Harmon, the tenant. All right. Uh, Carly Harmon? Yes. OK. Um, do you see Mr. Hewitt in the courtroom today? I do. Could you identify him for me? At the defense double here, Warren Green. Uh, record reflect he's identified Mr. Hewitt. Uh, so when you make uh, contact uh, with Mr. Hewitt, um, uh, I guess what was the what was the nature of that exchange? Uh, again, he admitted that the dog was his, and he knew he should be getting it out of the heat. So he was uh, looked like maybe packing a bag to head out the door and leave at the time that I had gotten there. Okay. Um, and so, what um, I guess did you in investigate further into the situation at that point in time? I asked him to go out to the car with me so that we could get the dog out, and then uh, begin asking for his name and whatnot, and. Uh, actually received a false name from him. Objection, Your Honor. I'm going to object to this line of questioning because it calls for hearsay. Objections overruled. It's a statement of the defendant, and that's not hearsay. It's an admission. So you can testify regarding that. So, uh, so he gave you a, a, a different name. Uh, Correct. I, I got, how'd you determine that name was incorrect? Uh, well, it was obvious that he was drawing from creation to figure out his name and his birthday, it, it, it was clear that he didn't readily know it. And so I ended up securing him in the back of my patrol car and then going to talk to Ms. Harmon that I hadn't had a chance to talk to yet. And she gave me uh, his correct name and birthday. So, so she identified him at that point as Trevor Hewitt? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you run Mr. Hewitt through lean at that point? I did. Okay. Uh, did you... Did you learn anything relevant to the situation at that point in time? Oh, first off, confirmed his identity through his driver's license image, but then secondly, discovered a personal protection order that had been served on July 27th. And uh, was that protection order against Mr. Hewitt? Yes. And, and who was that protection order uh, protecting? Ms. Harmon. Ms. Harmon. Um, and do you recall what the restrictions were? on uh, the PPO was was um, he was he barred from contacting her specifically in any way right being at the apartment or her residence uh, there were several conditions and so just his presence there uh, was a violation okay um uh did you did you ask Mr. Hewitt um about the PPO 
I did. Did he, uh, did he acknowledge awareness of the PPO at that point? He knew about it and said that she had invited him over that day. Okay. So he did deny that he was violating the PPO? Right. Um, what'd you do, uh, I guess, once, uh, once you completed that part of your investigation? He was lodged for the violation of the personal protection order. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Gibson. I don't have any questions. Him as a dog. Uh, Ms. Harmon ended up taking it. And I don't know beyond that. Uh, it wasn't her dog. I know it was an issue to be able to keep it at the apartment. So I'm not sure what she did with it from there, but it was not in the car. But it, uh, it got out of the car. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything further? No, you're on. All right. Uh, thank you. You may step down. Any other testimony? Uh, no, you're Mr. Gibson. Uh, The defense would call Carly Harmon. Ms. Harmon, would you come back up, please? Mr. Gibson, she was already subjected to examination and cross-examination. What else do you wish to ask her? Well, it was, uh, the officer had um, testified that Trevor Hewitt was saying that he had been invited over to her residence that day. So I wanted to ask her about that. All right, Ms. Harmon, let's swear you in once again. Would you please face me? You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes, sir. And would you speak up and state your name once again for the record? Carly Harmon. C-A-R-L-E-E-H-A-R-M-O-N? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Do you recall uh, the when the police officer had come to your residence on August 12th of 2023? Yes. And there was a situation apparently with the dog in the car and Trevor Hewitt, uh, do you recall that day then? Yes. Sir. Now, did you invite Trevor Hewitt over to your residence that day? I'm going to object as to relevance. Um, the matter of whether he was invited is not material to the violation of the PPO that's being discussed here. Uh, that is accurate. It's not her order. It was Judge Tomlin's, Head Judge Patterson's order. Um, so to some extent, it doesn't matter whether he was invited or not, but I'll allow you to answer the question. Thank you. Um, well, yes. Did, he, did you invite Trevor over there that day? No. All right. You can step down. Okay, I have no further questions. All right. Um, the defense doesn't have any other witnesses. Uh, motion uh, to bind? Yes, Your Honor. We move to bind this over. I believe the testimony is shown that uh, there's probable cause to believe that the crime of aggravated stalking uh, occurred here. Uh, Ms. Harmon uh, testified that uh, testified to the re repeated contacts uh, from Mr. Hewitt, uh, uh, the multiple texts, calls, letters, um, uh, some bearing his name, um, and uh, Furthermore, testified that she felt harassed uh, by this behavior, that it caused her some emotional distress. Um, uh, her testimony and the testimony of uh, Chief Thayer also indicated that this uh, contact was all in violation of an active PPO, having been active since the end of July. So uh, we would ask that uh, the court bind this over. Uh, count one. 
Mr. Gibson. Uh, the defense uh, would wish to point out that um, when it comes to this type of a situation, um, you know, the conduct that is in the PPP, excuse me, the conduct that is alleged to have been prohibited conduct in the personal protection order, you know, that needs to be related to the conduct that is alleged um, now. And so in this, so, you know, in this circumstance, the defense would leave this in the court's discretion. Thank you. Can I have a chance to talk, Your Honor? No. I'm not, you just don't. That's just how it works. That you don't just get to, but this is a probable cause hearing, as I stated. The charge is alleged to be aggravated stalking, a willful course of conduct involved repeating or continuous harassment of Carly May Harmon. Spelled her name wrong. The conduct being such that would cause a reasonable person to feel harassed and said conduct actually causing Carly Harmon to feel harassed. Now that is stalking. If there is a personal protection order in place, it becomes aggravated stalking. And also it's in violation of the restraining order. Nobody ever put their order in effect. I mean, I have it, but it's not in evidence. But uh, Chief Thayer testified that the order clearly said he was not to have any contact with her. And as uh, Prosecutor Johnson pointed out, whether she gave him permission or requested him to come there doesn't matter. She said she didn't besides, but she testified about the dozens of phone calls and letters. And there's a letter with two postcards in evidence. All this time, there was a personal protection order in effect. The only element we were lacking last week was the date of service of the PPO, which we now learned was July 27th. And uh, this incident occurred on August 14th. So there is sufficient evidence. And again, Mr. Hewitt, I stress this is a probable cause standard, probable cause to believe that a crime was committed and probable cause to believe that you did it. So I'm gonna find the matter over as requested by the prosecution. Are we ready to begin the next case? Yes, sir. There's this. Yeah, if you want. Nice to see you, Chief. All right, the next case actually precedes this case. It's file number two about July 6th, 2023 in the city of Sturgis. Could you remove your hat, please? Thank you. Uh, that Trevor William Eugene Hewitt did make an assault on Carly Harmon an individual with whom he had a dating relationship. That's called domestic violence or domestic assault. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. But your charge is being a second or subsequent offense, which turns it into a felony as a fourth habitual offender, which further endorses it 
I believe, up to a, a life offense. Uh, and so we're going to take testimony regarding this alleged domestic violence of July 6th. Uh, Mr. Johnson, are you ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Gibson? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you may call your witness. So the people will call Carly Harmon back to the stand. Ms. Harmon, you come back up. Good afternoon. Once again, do you swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this case regarding the events of July 6th will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief? All right, have a seat. And once again, would you state your name? Harry Harmon. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Harmon, uh, do you... You recall where you were on July 6th of 2023? Um, I was in Sturgis. In Sturgis. Um, and uh, on that date, um, uh, were you, uh, did, I guess, did you, uh, did you have contact with Trevor Hewitt on that day? Yeah, we were supposed to have court for our son. Okay. Um, and what, I guess, um, what was the nature of your, your interaction with him on the, on the 6th of July? Um, well, we both had court for our son, so we were both all super upset because things weren't going well. And, uh, our, our, like, talking argument kind of escalated. Um, did it get physical? I grabbed my arm, but... um, Was that the, the extent of it? You, re you recall what the disagreement was about? Uh, the vehicle. Um, uh, so you, you grabbed your arm, uh, it was it, you grabbed your arm kind of hard? Was it a, a, a strong touch? I'm going to show you, and, and I, I, following this, did you contact law enforcement after this exchange? Okay. I'm going to show you, I'm showing defense counsel, but I'm going to show you what I've marked as people's proposed one. There, you take a look at that. You tell me, uh, do you recognize uh, what's in the photo there? Yeah, it's my arm. Sure. Uh, is that your arm uh, on the date of this incident? Yes. Yeah. Is that um, uh, is that what it was here is from the, the contact you had with him? Is that correct? All right. Um, and is that, I mean, as you recall, is that what, uh, what it looked like on that date? Um, <clears throat> I would move to admit uh, people's one, and I have no additional questions. Mr. Gibson, any questions regarding the exhibit and or the witness? Did she identify the defendant? Uh, I guess I did, I did not have her identify the defendant, Judge. So. Why don't you go ahead? I would ask that, it, do you see Mr. Hewitt in the courtroom today? Yes. Uh, could you uh, describe him or what he's wearing to me? Green. Green and white. May the record reflect she has identified Mr. Hewitt. Thank you. All right, Mr. Gibson. If they, if I, uh, with regard to, if I may, Bob, dear, the witness Certainly. about the exhibit. Yes. Uh, so, do you specifically remember this photograph being taken? Yes. Okay, and so you remember that this would have been clothing that you would have been wearing that day, and that. This would have been your arm on that specific day. Yes. Okay. Because I was at work the entire day from eight o'clock in the morning till six at night, and this happened at two o'clock. I wasn't there. That's what it matters. Uh, all right. That's not evidence or testimony. It's the so, position. And you specifically remember this day to be 
July 6th of 2023, is that correct? Yes. And you're certain it was that date? Uh, now, you said sure. July 26th. The complaint says it was July 6th. Uh, the day that this happened, do you recall if you knew that Trevor Hewitt was had a job at that point in time? Um, probably, yeah. Where was he? Would you know where he was working at that time? Oh, the water mechanic, please. So, th if this happened at around ten oh seven in the morning, yeah. normally been at work at that time of the day. Um, not if he had court, I would. But yeah. Okay. Jeff will testify. Jeff will testify that I'll do All right, thank you. I have no further questions. Anything further? Nothing further is witness. No. So was this before you would go to court or at nine o'clock in the morning at court via Zoom? Okay, so did this incident happen after that? After. All right, happened after the court hearing. All right, and the hearing was via Zoom. Was Trevor also at the hearing via Zoom? Uh, nope, he did not attend. And this happened in the city of Sturgis? Yes. And where, what was the address? So three George Street. Whose house was it? Um, my our mutual friend Alyssa and her husband Josh. There's. Oh. You indicated there was some struggle about a vehicle. Yeah. Uh, so did he come to get this vehicle? Yeah. Was there a dispute about that? Yes. Did he end up taking it? Um, yes. All right. Uh, does that raise questions for anyone else? No, no. All right. That's you can, Mr. Gibson, any for you? Uh, do you do you know how Trevor would have gotten there that day? Yes. Could he have walked? Yes. Okay, because he didn't he didn't come in the vehicle, I assume if it was at Maybe that residence. His boss was giving him rides back and forth to work, I'd assume. Okay. So you're just not sure you're not certain. I have how bigger got things there. to worry about than how Trevor was getting around at that time. Okay. Thank you. All right, you can step down. Thank you. Any further? No, you're under further. Uh, may I have the picture? I will admit exhibit number one. Oh, she's got one. All right, well, I guess some point the parties can get the video of the zoom call from that day see if it matches the shirt that she's wearing in this picture but it does show some redness on her arm and it is admitted uh, your honor i moved to the court bind over on count one uh, testimony it's pretty clear uh, ms Harmon uh, testified that mr hewitt um, committed a battery upon her, upon her arm and that they were in a dating relationship. Um, so I believe that the uh, burden's been met here. Thank you. Mr. Gibson. The defense will leave it in the court's discretion. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, that doesn't mean he's rolling over and playing dead. He just knows that the standard is pretty low 
And essentially, this is a misdemeanor, uh, impermissive touching of someone you're in a dating relationship with. Um, she testified that you grabbed her arm. There was an argument about the car. I can see the marks. That's an no, impermissive right. touching. She oh, says you're dating and you had a child. Well, that's called an alibi defense, which you present a notice of intent to provide an alibi. And uh, there's a way to do it. And you can pursue that in the circuit court. I wasn't there. Could be a pretty good defense if, in fact, you weren't there. There was some confusion about what day this was. But the complaint alleges it's July 6th. Anyway, because you have two previous convictions uh, for domestic violence, which the court takes notice of from the complaint. It's very serious, Your Honor. Well, very, it, is. Very, it turns it into a serious four year, uh, five year felony offense as an habitual. So I agree with you there, Mr. Hewitt. And a life tale, Your Honor. This, this is something that I never would ever plan for in my life. This is something that is, this is crazy. Judge well, Middleton, you, you, man, I've, I've been talking to you and seeing you since I was 13 years old. Yes, sir. This is insane. Well, this, is, this, this right here is, this is crazy. Never. I wasn't there and I never am there. I know. And if I ever was there, I couldn't hear the case. So it's a standard of probable cause, but I had this not, matter I is so sad as you testify here, it involves your son. This relationship has This relationship has, has tormented me in a humongous way. I still love her. Yes. I still love her. And, you and I know she still loves me. You can't put it down. But I find... I can't that, put it down. She she won't let me put it down. Well, she won't. She won't uh, as long as she won't leave me alone, I'm never going to leave her alone. Well, and that's what to me, call her. Well, you asked her times from the jail, but we were supposed to get married in your court, Your Honor. I understand. You remember that? Yes, I do. All right, you can take Mr. Hewitt out. Both of these men court bond remains as scheduled, and uh, can deal with it upstairs. My question is, do you still love me, Mr. Hewitt? You have a personal do? protection no order. Do. You're not supposed to even have. No any matter contact. how long I do, it doesn't uh, matter if I do do ten years. In well, prison. you're working. As long yourself. as you're still waiting for me when I get out, I'll still marry you into it all right you miss Harmon. perhaps we should have excused you from here on her don you've been through more above and beyond and i'm not going to comment on the probate court case but it did not have a happy ending he's going to remain in custody pending a disposition of these and other cases Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You're good to go, Carly. I'm very sorry. All right. I guess I've known everybody since they were 13 years old, including Mr. Stickley. But we'll be in recess here, and uh, we have a full day tomorrow.